So th for the first two videos, you've done some really great problem solving and it's been amazing seeing the work that's come through. The thing that's kind of really come across is how much you've all seemed to really enjoy the tasks. And I've seen some amazing photos of you and pictures of work, so thank you so much for that. Um, today, we're kind of preparing for some of the problem solving tasks we're doing later on in, in, at the back end of this week. And we're building your understanding of difference, calculating differences and spotting some patterns between calculations as well. I hope you find it really useful, really interesting. We're going to get warmed up with a task that's quite similar to the one that you, uh, that you did yesterday. Um, think of three different whole numbers. The sum of the numbers is 20. The difference between the largest and the smallest number is 10. See if now you can be really fluent in finding a system to find all the possible answers. There's your challenge. Pause the video and have a go. Okay, so let's see if we can work on a system. Uh, let, let's say I could start with one and 11. Um, they add up to make 12. And so the middle number then must be an eight. Working systematically, I'll think, I want to keep that difference uh, 10. So let's try 2 and 12. 2 and 12 is 14. So then 6 um, in the middle. And then if I go keep going on my system, 3 and 13, that's 16. I'll leave 4 in the middle. Now, I know actually I can't use 4 and 14 because 4 plus 14 is 18. That leaves 2 and 2 would then become my smallest number. Um, so then I know I've, I've actually already found all of the three possible answers. It was very similar thinking that we used to that in yesterday's main task. Four different numbers. The sum of the numbers is 23. The difference between the smallest and the largest number is 6. Let's say we, we tried and we thought, well, could the smallest number be 1 and the largest be 7? Have a look at this fantastic reasoning here. Um, explain how you know this statement is correct. The largest number must be more than 7. If 7 was the biggest number, the smallest would have to be 1, and the other two digits would have to add up to 15. And it isn't possible, as one of the digits would always be bigger than 7. Well done. That is a, a brilliant explanation. So let's keep going on that worked example. So then, systematically, I might try 2 and 8. The two numbers in the middle would have to add up to 13 for a total of 23. Um, is that possible? Well, yeah, it is with 6 and 7. Um, that is the only answer using 2 as the smallest number and 8 as the largest because I guess I could try, if I tried for 5 and 8 then I would have um, two numbers that are the same, I'd have, I'd have two 8s. So I'm going to keep going with my system and now I'm going to go for 3 as my smallest number and 9 as my largest number. Numbers in the middle, sum of 11, Ooh, any possibilities there? Well 5 and 6 is 1. Uh, but it's not the only one. I guess it could be 4 and 7 as well. Um, and they're, again, they're the only possibilities there because then if I went down to a 3 and an 8, then I'd have two 3s. What could I try next? Let's say my smallest number was 4 and my largest number was 10. Uh, the numbers in the middle would have to add up to 9. Well, that could only be done, let's say, with a 4 and a 5 or numbers smaller than, at least with one number smaller than that. And then either the difference would be incorrect or again, I would have two fours. That's my strategy for knowing how many answers there are in total. There were three. So for today's video, we're going to focus on finding the difference, uh, a form of subtraction, seeing subtraction. We're going to look particularly at questions where there's the same difference. And the key thing for me to mention now is you might be able to calculate the answers to some of the questions anyway. The questions themselves aren't that difficult. But the key is finding the patterns, being able to spot those patterns and be able to explain what you notice. If we had a, a part of 8 and a part of 4, that makes the whole, which is 12. If I'm looking at 12 and I'm subtracting a part of 8 or thinking what's the difference between 12 and 8, of course it would be 4, it would be like the other part. It's a key thing to understand and we're going to kind of extend our understanding around that. So let's say I then adjust those numbers from 12 and 8 and I add 3 to both numbers. So they become 11 and 15. Now, of course, what do we notice about the difference? It stays the same. I add the same number to both numbers and the difference, it stays the same. Let's have a look at this one. So now I go from 15 and 11 and I subtract 6 from both numbers and 
to make them 9 and 5. Now, of course, what happens to the difference? When I subtract the same number, the difference stays the same again. Now, have a look at these questions. I call them rank by difficulty. You're going to see four questions. I want you to order them from the question you think is the hardest to the question you think is the easiest. I've got an unusual instruction for you. You don't actually even need to answer the questions. If you're finding it difficult to calculate the answer, that's fine. All you need to do is actually rank the questions from the hardest to the easiest. But you do need to explain why. Why have you put them in that order? Here are the questions. Pause the video and rank by difficulty. Okay, I wonder how different you found those questions. Maybe some of them immediately you just knew what the answer was or some of you thought calculating will be slightly easier. Well, of course, the answer to all the questions is the same. It's 15. Um, 20 subtract 5, you might have just immediately known the answer was 15. Perhaps 102 subtract 87 you saw as being harder because it involved bordering the 100. I really want to focus on the other two questions though. 59 subtract 44, my guess is you thought that that was slightly easier than 61 subtract 46. F 50 take away 40 leaves 10, 9 take away 4 leaves 5. 61 subtract 46, we've got a kind of border, um, so it's slightly, we might see that as slightly more difficult. Let's have a think about that though. 59 and 44. Actually, if I just add 2 to both numbers, then it becomes 61 and 46. So actually, if I have a question like 61 and 46, and I really understand this idea, all I need to do is subtract 2 from both numbers, and I've made a calculation with the same answer that's actually easier to calculate. What a technique! So I wonder if you can use this understanding when we're coming to do some calculations. Let me show you just a few more examples. 532 subtract 189 equals 347. 536 is 4 more. 189 is 4 more. So the answer will just be the same. 536 subtract 187. So I'm subtracting 2 less. So the answer will be 2 more. 349. And... 534, well that's 2 less, and I'm subtracting 2 more, so overall the answer will be, will be 4 less, 345. I wonder if you'll be able to see these relationships and describe them. Pause the video and have a go. Okay, so let's have a look. 162 subtract 126 equals 136. 263, one more, subtract 125. One less will be two more. And then 263 to 267, that's four more. 125 to 129, four more. The answer will be the same. The magic really comes here when you can get subtraction questions and then adjust them just to make easier calculations. I hope you like this as an idea. Okay, to find your independent task, the page we're on is icmaths.com, home lessons, scroll down to underneath your video, and today's tasks, year five and six. Again, today, the, the focus shouldn't be the difficulty of the questions, but how clearly you can see the relationships between them. So it's not really so much about you writing the correct answers and again the answers are written underneath at the bottom of this page but can you see and describe the link between each question whichever sequence you maybe try and answer or i think this would be great so you can adjust the level of challenge so it's just right for you the extend task design your own sequence of questions for subtraction um, so think about four or five questions you can put in a sequence. I would love to use them tomorrow as well if you take photos of them. Um, make small changes to the questions that you use. I wonder if you can describe the kind of link between those questions. Adults, see if you can come up with a sequence. Test those children with your sequence. But children, test the adults around you with your sequence. Can they see the links between the questions? So I'll use some of the sequences that you design as the warm-up activity in tomorrow's video as well. I'll really look forward to getting them through. Parents, 
there's a new video that I've put together if you've got younger children, so children in Key Stage 1, about a range of games that you can play with, with those children, the Connect 4 games. Uh, I hope you'll find them really useful, and once again, I will see you tomorrow.